Okay, we are here on case number D538315, Loftus versus Paul. I'll note for the record the parties present proper person. And also present is, is the children's guardian ad litem. Mr. Toady, would you please enter your appearance as yes, guardian ad litem? Yes, Judge Frank, we're going to ad litem for the children. Okay. And uh, frankly, I thought we were going to be able to proceed with proving up the divorce in this case until um, the defendant made numerous assertions against the plaintiff with regard to the health and well-being of the party's minor children. I felt that it was appropriate that there be somebody who could get to the truth of the matter and figure out there have been, uh, this is not the first case involving these two parties. And there have been a myriad of accusations, all stemming, it seems to me, from one very unfortunate event that occurred with the party's youngest child, who is now deceased. Um, so my question is, have you had an opportunity to speak to the parties? Yes, Judge, my office has. We've kind of, all the attorneys in the office have kind of taken a part of this. Let me just give the court a little bit of an idea of what, what we've done so far and where we think we need to go. Uh, we have met with both parents. I believe that Simone from my office has been in both parents' homes. That what? Simone from my office has been in both parents' homes. The children have been interviewed at our office. Uh, the therapist has been interviewed. The parties have been interviewed. Uh, I had communications with um, a district attorney from the child uh, uh, dependency department, as well as one of the caseworkers that had dealt with the case. We and that was the case that involved the youngest child? There is more than one case. Okay, so that I didn't know. Well, neither did we. And when we had spoken then about trying to get copies of the cases, I was told that for guarding that light to order them, it'll take about six weeks. So we have contacted your department in hopes of getting them quickly, because both Madam District Attorney and the caseworker indicated to my office that it is essential that we review these cases uh, before we go any further with regard to making recommendations to the court. Is there an ongoing investigation? There is not currently, no judge. And did they disclose which of the two parents or both of them were the subject of the investigations? They did not, but they indicated very specifically, you must review these documents. No, sir. I'm not entering, answering getting any more input from you. No, ma'am. I was just scratching my face. Okay. So what are we doing today? Well, uh, what w I know that this was on for, I believe, a status check or something of that nature today, and we had contacted the department, I believe, yesterday, the day before, and said, look, we can put together a report with everything that we have so far, but the report is going to say... Well, then it's useless. Right. So I would just indicate to the court probably... Uh, if you want to continue for two weeks, Judge, I would assume you're saying... I'm not sure two weeks is enough. Well, I, I, when, I, in the past when I've been working with, uh, with the dependency department and a, and a district court judge says, I would like these records, they get there pretty quick. So, and between everybody in my office, we have taken quite a, uh, an interest in this case. Now, I'll be perfectly honest. This is the reason I asked the question. I have records, but they're as of December of 2016. Is it your understanding at all that there that there are records subsequent to December of 2016? That's my understanding, yes. Okay, that's, that's what I was trying to determine. Would you send an email to Jake making sure he orders the reports and that they're made available to Mr. Toady to review? I assume mm -hmm. you both agree Mr. Toady can review them? Yes. And I assume you both re agree I can review them? Yes. yes. And All right. Madam Clerk, just if you could, there might be, just to make sure that if there's multiple cases, there's usually petition one, petition two, things of that nature, so just the entirety of the file. Yeah, well, it would be the entirety of the file. Now, I would ask, however, given the confidential nature, that if you can review them in my of chambers. Course. Yes, Judge. Okay. Then we'll do that. Um, you're still married to each other, okay? Well, this is a... It said divorced on the... Did I divorce you? I could have sworn I didn't. There's no. Mo he never filed a order. What? He hasn't filed an order yet. Ah, only as to property and debt. Yeah. Okay. And where's the decree? 
Your Honor, I'm in the process of obtaining an attorney. What? I'm in the process of obtaining an attorney, and I was I felt okay. Ill. Well, you got two weeks Thank to you. get me the decree. Otherwise, I'll hold you in contempt. You bet. Thanks, Your Honor. Okay, two weeks, and she needs to look at it. That means that you only have about a week and a half because you got to give her an opportunity to look at it. You bet, Your Honor. Can I get his current address because he's moved again? Did you move no, again? Your Honor. Did you move again? Do you um, want me to swear you in and ask you that question? Yes, Your Honor, you can, but I've had my vehicle vandalized over nine times. Sir, did you move since... again? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, what's the address? 11462 Tongariva Street, Malibu, California, 90265. It's my Ooh, parents' home. Okay, that's got interesting. Where are the children? The children temporarily stay with me at an apartment here in town when they're, when they're with me at a friend's house. You haven't removed them from the state of Nevada, have you? No. You not are prohibited once. from removing them from the state from the state of Nevada. I know that it only applies to me and not to the plaint not to the plaintiff. She's moved, removed them several times. I'm sorry, what? I know that state. You went to the state fair, which is out of state. state really? When did this become a conversation? Mr. Toady, I the court greatly appreciates your efforts in this case. Yes, Judge. And by the way, what's the address where you have the children in Nevada? Um, right now, I'm at a temporary apartment. It's, uh huh. And what's the address? I believe it's one. It's four one. Uh, one five. Um, Sirius Avenue. Your Honor, she's taken the kids Sir? to several. Sir, I'm not done. Before you obtained these two addresses. Or at the time, did you notify Mr. Toady that you changed addresses? No, and here's why, Your Honor. There's no way here. Mr. Toady is a fine, upstanding citizen of the state of Nevada and is a well-respected attorney and is well-respected by virtually every judge that sits on the 8th Judicial District Court Family Division. Your Honor, so that's the not, fact that, that you would that not disclose... Not sir, I'm talking. You're not. The fact that you would not disclose what is vital information to Mr. Toady causes me grave concern. Your Honor, there's a reason for it. Can I please explain? Oh, can't wait. Glad you're excited, Your Honor. Um, here's, the, here's the situation. I was moving from one apartment in my complex to another apartment in my complex at, 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 at um, Tivoli, not Tivoli, at, at Solis, and because I was going from one bedroom to a two bedroom. It turned out that the two bedroom wasn't ready. So temporarily, they put us, they, we're, we're staying right where we are until the apartment's ready, then we're moving right back. When not, will that be ready? I, I believe it's, it was supposed to be ready last week and it's still not ready. They had a problem with bed bugs or something like that. And they, and they have the exterminators and stuff like that working on it as well as some other issues. You're going to keep Mr. Toady apprised of where the children are, correct? Absolutely. And you haven't moved, have you? I moved by put a change of address in your computer. Okay. And you have to notify the court. I bet you, Your Honor. And by the way, I want to make it perfectly clear. You can't take the kids to California without court order. I understand that, Your Honor. But that's not what was in the court order previous. It was like it a written thing from... Today um, it is. Oh, you bet you, Your Honor. Can I have one since my mom is gravely ill? What? Since Can I have an order since my mother is gravely ill? Talk to the mother of your children. I already have, Your I Honor. I've talked to her several times. And you said okay. I said it was okay. Your Honor, she refuses. It says in the court order that I have to have a written statement from her. She's refused to give me that written statement. It says where? There's an injunction that says you right. cannot be removed the kids out of state to keep them from the other party. Without a you written court the kids order. Out of without state. a written, but without a pair, a written statement sir, from the parents. Sir, you sit down and behave yourself in my court. There is no cross conversation. Now, here's the deal. Apparently, even though you have now told me it's such a big problem, the plaintiff on the other hand has said, he's asked me if it's okay to take the kids to visit grandma, and I said okay. They gotta be able to be in school, and they gotta do whatever they need to do. They're not moving to California, but she's already given you permission to take them. You on the other hand want to make sure that I have the worst possible impression of the plaintiff, so you're going to make it appear That's to me true. that she said no. No, no, that's not true. I obviously believe in following the, the law. Sir, did she say okay? She just did just now, Your oh, Honor. Oh, did she, she say okay before? Well. Is this the very first time you heard okay? Your Honor, it's the very first... Is this first the very first time you heard okay? 
Your Honor, I have a court order. Is this the very first time you heard okay? No, Your Honor, but I have a court so order stating that I need... So why are you telling me it's a problem? It's a problem because I have in the court order right here, it says that I need written permission from the plaintiff. Written permission. And... So prepare a document for her to sign. What? You know, it doesn't... You know, you could have handed her a document that I give my ex-husband permission to take our children to visit grandma in the state of California from this date to this date. The end. But you didn't do that, did you? You just want me to deal with it. No, Your Honor, I didn't. I've asked her several times for written documents. Has he ever asked you if you'd fill out a form? I have contested it. Well, he won't come to my house, so I can't sign a form because he won't come anywhere near me. But I've sent text messages. Again, Mr. Toady, the court appreciates you and your firm's <laughs> efforts in this matter. Um, and All right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to send this 30 days out. I'm not changing the timeshare. Um, sir, if you have her email address, here's what you can do. You can prepare a form. You can email it to her. Then she can sign it, assuming it's appropriate and doesn't give you permission to take, move the kids outside of the state and doesn't give you permission to, make sh to allow them to miss any school. And then she can sign it. And you know what she can do then? She can email it back to you. Golly gee, isn't that difficult? You don't have to go to her house. But for some reason, you want to make this my problem. You want to make it the kid's problem. You want to make it her problem. That's not true, It's Your nobody's Honor. but yours. Your Honor, that's not true at all. Sir, you know, the unfortunate fact is you and the plaintiff have been in front of me for multiple times over the course of almost two years. And, you know, I form impressions by watching litigants in my courtroom. And repeatedly, you've wanted to make a mountain out of a molehill. I'm tired of mountains. I don't think your kids are tired of mountains. All they want to do is hang out with their mommy and daddy. They just want to be kids. They have, are sick and tired of the conflict between the two of you. And if I were to hazard a guess, one of these two kids might be one of those little kids who's sitting in the classroom in the corner crying his or her eyes out because mommy and daddy aren't very nice to each other. But who cares what they feel? Because I don't know that you do. Of course I do, Your Honor. You are so busy raging against the plaintiff for something she did that she's already had to pay the price on and to this day has horrible feelings about. But no, you want to make sure that for the rest of her life she's miserable. And as a result, you're making the children's lives miserable. And I'm tired of it. Just tired of it. Your Honor, that is simply I am not tired true. of it. I am just tired of it. You are giving your kids not a break. One of the reasons I asked for the appointment of a guardian ad litem, and I do find that Mr. Toady is good, and I'm going to say this, and I said this in front of uh, Ms. Gancy. My concern is that the level of distrust by the defendant the level of hostility toward the plaintiff by the defendant, the inability of the defendant to get over an un horribly unfortunate event involving the youngest child. I don't know how it's impacting the two that remain. You know, there's such a thing as survivor's guilt, and what really disturbs me more than anything else, and I want to make this perfectly clear, this is one of the main reasons I need you here. One of the children, I think it was Storm, was actually in the hot tub with the youngest child. Was it, oh, was it Emmanuel? No, none of them were. I thought one of them left. Storm was in the pool with me. Your Honor, it was Storm. But my point he, he being is, I don't know how these children are coping with the death of their baby brother. Okay? I am concerned that the inability of the defendant to move forward in a positive fashion as to the remaining children is harming them emotionally. That to me is the biggest concern I have. For example, I am not, I recall specifically, there was a point in time when the defendant was insisting that the children not be anywhere near a pool. 
I said, how about they learn to swim? So I ordered the plaintiff to get them swimming lessons. Okay, I proved that they've learned how to swim. Because, frankly, they were old enough they needed to learn how to swim. Any kid living in Las Vegas needs to learn how to swim. So the plaintiff started them on swimming lessons at, I believe, the city pool. That was not acceptable to the defendant because it was on days that were her days, not his, or something like that. So then he switched them to a different pool. But then we come back, the kids have been educated in swimming and swim safety. Now he's insisting that a seven-year-old, I think maybe he was eight at the time, have to wear water rings at all times. I said, wait a minute. That makes no sense. First of all, water rings are for little ones. And it's not particularly flattering to an older child to have to wear water wings. Secondly, water wings are themselves a danger. So I was just, it's, it's just been one thing after another, after another, for now maybe years on end. And I am truly, truly concerned about the emotional well-being and the future of the two remaining kids because I am concerned that the defendant has an inability to move on and to focus on these two kids in a positive fashion and that's what it's brought down to. Now it may well be there are additional concerns with the plaintiff. I don't know and that's why I said you know we, could, we both have to look at those CPS records or it may well be that this is more mountains and molehills that have then gone to CPS. I don't know. You know, sometimes CPS wants us to look at records because they worry about the boy who cried wolf. I don't know if this is one of those cases. I honestly don't. But I'm going to take a look at it. And we'll come back in 30 days. I want to make sure you've had a chance to look at them and to ask any more questions and do further inquiry because as a practical matter, uh, I have no idea what the emotional well-being is of these two remaining children, and they deserve better than this. And that has been my concern for a long, long time. This is no surprise to either one of them, because my orders, I've said this time and again, when it comes to children, my orders are not designed to reward parties or to punish parties, much as they might want to reward or punish each other or themselves. My orders are about kids. My goal with every order I issue about kids is that I want to give each child whose parents are in front of me the best, absolute best opportunity to be a strong, healthy, successful adult in our community. I don't know what's going on with these two. I just don't. And I'm worried about long-term repercussions with them. That's the reason for the guardian ad litem. It's not for you two to lobby Mr. Toady. It's frankly for Mr. Toady to be able to make a deliberative, intelligent conclusion about what's in these kids' best interest. So that's where we're going with it. All right, in light of what CPS has said, and I will tell you, honestly, I don't know if this is the boy that cried wolf or there are some serious concerns about the plan. I don't know. <clears throat> Um, by the way, did you have an opportunity to visit the party's residences? This can't Okay, so you'll be able to yes, well, report on that. All right, let's come back in 30 days. Can we do November 28th at 10? It's after Thanksgiving. Your Honor, can you have him add me to the safe key application? Because he listed... What? He listed Mari as the guardian again on the safe key, which is the before and after school program. And I Who's can't Mari? Make... Mari's the girlfriend. <laughs> not the girlfriend. Please prepare an order saying that you're to be included in owning and all school records and somebody named Mari is to be deleted. I have given this Mari person absolutely no authority and there is a parental preference in this state. Right. My issue, safe key won't take my word. He has How about to physically... my order? Will they take my order? He has to physically add me. No, they and take have... my order. I, I have to... Order... Yeah. I get to order them to add your name and to exclude the other name. I get to do that. You have joint legal custody. Okay, get an order prepared that I've signed. You take that to them. And then, if they won't honor that order, I will issue a subpoena for them to appear and show cause why not. 28th at 10 is fine. 
What? The 28th. Oh, can't wait. What now? I don't know. You know, sometimes when people, and I, I, I warn pro se litigants about this all the time, sometimes there are things they want to say so badly, and they don't have an attorney to represent them to explain, not a good idea to say this to the judge. So, but they think they want to. I want you to understand, and I think I've tried very hard to be as candid with you as possible, sir. What you think you're telling me is has been time and again not what I'm hearing. So, if you really want to say something right now, you're free to do so, but you have been properly admonished. It might not be a good idea. Your girlfriend is off the school records. First of all, this she's not mom. my girlfriend, Your Honor. What? She's not my girlfriend, Your Honor. Who is she? She was appointed by DFS to 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 literally literally she was her name's by off. DFS during court the court order. Not no a parental preference. Not a court problem, order. Not she a has no authority in my court you to pick honor. up those children to take them to safety or pick them up from. The only two people who have authority to do so is the plaintiff are the plaintiff and you. And if you've excluded the plaintiff, shame on you. You prepare an order that makes sure it directs the, the school district and the Save Key program to add your name so that you can pick up the children on your times. Your See? Honor. This is what I'm dealing with. Understood, Judge. Okay, so I'll see you on the 28th. Thank you, Judge. And Judge, your department will contact me when the records are ready. Yeah, would you let um, Jake know? Yeah. Thank you, Judge.